going on, YouTube Fitness Family? I am very excited. It is episode numero uno. Hopefully, have lots of episodes. And I'm sure you're wondering why the ridiculous costume. The reason is because this is episode one of Forum Police. And I'm very excited about this because you might be thinking I'm here to rip other fitness influencers' workouts to shreds. But in reality, what I want to do is give credit where credit's due maybe make, let's say, suggestions or modifications, but bring a ton of value to you as a viewer about why I'm saying whether something might be good form or bad form or whether they could make small improvements, maybe what other exercises might be maybe a better alternative for what they're trying to achieve. So without further ado, let's get into this first episode. We have the infamous, the notorious Shizzy. So this guy's been coming up in the fitness world, claims natural. We're not gonna get into that in this video. Absolute house, six foot two, six foot three, 230 pounds, huge upper body, huge arms. So I'm gonna be watching this guy raw. This I've not seen this video yet of his chest training. I'm gonna kind of break it down as we go through it. So so very, very excited for this. Um, if you don't know who Shizzy is, go look up his page. Natural body boy, I think he's in his mid-20s, just competed in a natural competition. So let's see how his workouts look. All right, guys, chest day starting out. All right, breaking the law right off the bat, love that. Beverly Hills going 80. Love that. So we'll start the video in a rented McLaren going to 8 miles per hour. Hopefully the person that owns this did not see that. I have no idea what he's saying. All I got from that, we're starting off some incline press. Can't be mad about it. Good, like solid compound movement. I do like the incline dumbbells over the incline barbell. For safety reasons, when you are doing an incline barbell press, the reason I'm not a huge fan as compared to dumbbells is ergonomically speaking, you can you rotate the hands so the elbows are in a nice comfortable position to press. With a barbell movement, your elbows are always going to track your pinkies. So if you think about a barbell, it's a set position. And so your elbows are gonna track out and that's why there's so many injuries that happen due to barbell pressing because of that positioning, you're putting a ton of impetus and strain on that front delt and that bicep insertion and that pec minor. So pec minor is where the chest inserts into your shoulder, that kind of like bulbous area right there. And that's where everybody pops their chest, like everywhere, everybody. And it can be from a micro tear that then gets exacerbated or just you're going too heavy. A lot of times a lot of ego involved with an inclined barbell press. Dumbbells, you don't see as many injuries just due to the fact that ergonomic positioning and also because of the load usually isn't as high as when you have a barbell. Let's say, you know, on a good day, your bar, your incline dumbbell pressing, let's say hundreds, right? That same person's probably trying to load 315, 355, 375 on a barbell just because you're able to do more when it's on that singular bar as compared to two separate dumbbells. So the load is just never really gonna be higher. So let's see how he does on these dumbbell presses. The first thing I'll notice is I do like the angle that they're using for the bench. So a lot of times people would go too steep with it and inevitably that's gonna get a lot of front delt recruitment. I think that sweet spot is actually not 45. So I think it's closer to that 33, 35 degree angle. Um, I think a lot of times people go, you know, 45 or even, you know, closer to, um, let's say 90 or 85. Um, obviously 90 being completely perpendicular. So what I'm seeing here is not bad range of motion actually. The only thing I would say for him is he's got those dumbbells completely out the whole time, which is flaring the elbows. It's not terrible. Like if you have good shoulder mobility, you can actually get away with this. But as you drive up heavier and heavier weights, what you wanna do is actually kind of dig the elbows. You don't wanna turn them all the way into the side but you want to internally rotate those elbows. You're going to get a little bit more chest drive as opposed to front delt. And you can really, really maximize that force curve and then press and you can actually turn the dumbbells towards the top of the rep. So you kind of want to internally or so that would be internally rotate, correct? 
and then at the bottom, scapular traction, really pull those shoulder blades back, open up the chest. And then also the other thing is I would just say slow down and eccentric. If we're trying to body build here, the eccentric portion of movement is so important. You're gonna get so much more hypertrophy in that eccentric portion of the movement as compared to that concentric. So concentric is pressing, eccentric is negative. So I'd like to see him slow that down a bit. Posture is very sound. He's got a good arch in his lower back. He's pulling the shoulder blades back. He's opening up the chest. I don't have a problem with the positioning. The bench angle is great. Literally, just the, those two cues are slowing down the eccentric, tucking the elbows slightly towards the bottom of the rep. Let's say major props around just tossing the hell out of the dumbbells at the end of the set. He brings them down to his chest, down to his quads. So that was a very nice touch. Okay, homeboy's gonna go now. So his friend actually does a better job of that elbow angle, but his friend doesn't do as good a job with range of motion. So for chest pressing, we want to get that full stretch at the bottom. Stretch is so important for a number of reasons. Number one is we want to maximize motor recruitment. So if we can get deeper in our rep, you're going to get more motor recruitment through the entirety of the chest. Number two is longevity. If you're doing short reps, you're going to if you're training that muscle in a shortened capacity then obviously you're just gonna get that look of just like everything being really, really tight. So that's my big thing is working everything in super long range of motion, my flies, my presses, my pulls, anything like that, my leg days, everything super deep, because that allows me, if I'm training in those lengthened positions, then I don't need to do as much mobility work because my body's staying longer and healthier. So I'm not saying this friend's ego lifting, but he's got actually better positioning with the elbows on the press, but now he's not going as deep. Okay, Shizzy. Okay, Shizzy, I like this. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. So now we're moving on to a plate loaded. It kind of looks like almost a mid chest press. So we're not going to decline, not incline. It's almost uh, emulatory if you see like kind of the pin loaded machine press that are straight out. Um, I do like he uses a good amount of range of motion and the biggest thing I see him use on this exercise is better eccentric. So he's eccentrically loading, slowing down the movement. So he's kind of pressing out nice and hard, slow eccentric. And you saw him actually pause a little bit on the stretch for a few of those reps, which is actually a really good tactic to open up, feel that stretch, and then you can consciously drive through. The other good thing that does is exacerbates that stretch media for hypertrophy. So putting tension on the tissue in the stretch position has, has actually been proven to induce a lot of hypertrophy. So this is really good form here. This friend's really slacking on the eccentric again, just dumping the weight into his chest. Uh, it's just like you're just underutilizing movement pattern, especially with like a machine press like this. You just really want to milk that negative. There's no risk downside to really like utilizing the negative and just almost just taxing the chest to the maximal amount because like obviously with dumbbells or barbell you have the risk of if you do too much of a negative you might not be able to get it back out. But with this, you dig into a negative, you bottom it out, just, just get up, you're fine. Like the, the thing racks back here. So there's literally no risk. He's got a great chest, so. Alright, now we're in the fly. Alright, yeah, he, here's a great example of underutilizing a fly movement. He's really good on the peak contraction, just dumping back that negative, um, just letting it fall and then catching it at the back of the rep. 
You're probably not gonna get hurt like this, but it's also not the best form. You really wanna milk that negative and then kind of fall really deep into that stretch. I found that doing flies, especially on the machine fly, has opened up my chest so much because I've utilized such a large range of motion while training that it gives me that dual effect of maximal motor improvement through every part of my chest and also opening up my tissue so I don't really feel any front delt pain or bicep insertion pain anymore ever since training like this. And so one thing I'll say about Shizzy is that he trains hard, okay? So you can out science the hell out of a workout and end up just doing the bare minimum because you're so worried about every single rep being 100% perfect. I'm not saying that you should not focus on form. That's what these videos are all about. But one thing I will say about Shizzy in this video, you can tell that he takes his workouts really seriously. He trains close to failure and that's what's going to drive a lot of hypertrophy. So yeah, he might not be getting the best negative on every single one of these sets, but you see him like he could have stopped on that last set of flies four or five, six reps before he ended up actually stopping. Uh, he reset, he pushed through five or six hard reps, and that is what's going to, boys and girls, get you the most results. That is training close to failure with good form. I'm not saying his form is perfect, but it was good enough. And you see the results are showing, that's why he's got such a tremendous chest. Sure, it's genetics as well, but I think it also is a testament to his training intensity. Uh, that looks like we're doing some sort of incline, play lower press. Same really good form here, arch back, slow negative. And you see what he's doing? He's actually not grabbing onto the handle, he's doing a hook grip, which is probably, there's no safety issues on a machine like this. It's not like a barbell that can crash down on you. Um, and what that does is, it disables you from grabbing the hell out of the handle, which is it's usually going to cause you to more force the weight and usually push with those front delts. Whereas if you can relax here and do more of that hook grip, it, it kind of allows you to get a better press to the chest. I have found personally that if you're squeezing the hell out of the handle, and inevitably, if you're not trying to freaking squeeze it out of it, you're probably not going to force the reps as much. You're probably going to push through the correct area, create that mind-muscle connection more effectively. Ah, there they are. That's what I'm talking about. See how I hit those partials at the bottom of his rep. So instead of trying to force full reps when he was just completely fatigued, he got that extra bit of tax, that extra bit of hypertrophy through hitting those partial reps at the bottom, keeping those shoulders back. And that's what I would have liked to see him, him do on the flies as well. But this is perfect, kind of those pass failure partial reps. It is a little bit more of an advanced technique. So if you're a beginner lifter, I would just kind of start by sticking to full reps close to failure. You don't really need to dig into these some, some of these more advanced tactics until maybe one, two, three years into training. Um, just because with partials, there's more risk of injury. There's also that extra tax um, and volume that's not really trackable, right? So what you can see his training, it's not like he's got a log book and he's like, oh, I did 12 of these and eight, and eight of these. And no, what he's doing is he's picking a weight that he can control, pushing full reps to failure and then pushing some partials. And I think that's, I mean, personally, that's how I train. I don't like take a log book with me because that's inevitably gonna maybe sell myself a little bit short. I'm not somebody that just progressively overloads meetings. I'm not just gonna go to the gym to try to do more weight of the same exercise. What I'm doing is trying to create as much mind-muscle connection in the movement pattern that I'm hitting and then take that as close to failure with really good form and maybe hit, like a, he's doing some partial reps at the end of the set. So, it is an efficacious way to train, especially for hypertrophy. If you're strength training, it's really important for you to log your results because you need to modulate, titrate up your weights you're using every week because you, if you're strength training, the goal is to get stronger and you need to have more specificity to your training. Whereas he's chizzy the bodybuilder. He wants to be as big as possible, look as big as possible, and that's why he's training like this. <sighs> But 
this point they were posing. This guy's a very impressive physique, like literally great insertion, small waist, really impressive chest. All right guys, so that was the workout. I think if I was going to grade the workout as a whole, um, I didn't mind the structure. I didn't mind starting with that incline dumbbell press, moving into a plate loaded press, moving into a fly. I think there was a good balance. I think you hit a lot of different areas of the chest with different stimuli, with some more like novel stimuli when it came to the machine stuff. And then, you know, you obviously had your core movements, such as a dumbbell incline. Nothing here was super high risk, which I liked. Um, There's no crazy ego driven Smith machine pressing or dumbbell or barbell bench pressing. It was all really focused on his end result, which is inevitably getting bigger, driving hypertrophy. And I think there's a lot of great things to take away from this video. So number one, I'm gonna say is training intensity. I think that he really embodies that mentality of let's go in and work hard today and let's see how much we can get out of this workout. Because I think a lot of times people check the box, right? You go to the gym, you do your four to five sets of four to five exercises, you do eight to 12 reps and you go home. Whereas you can see they had a lot of fun with this training because it wasn't so rigid. It wasn't so, oh, formulaic and it needs to be eight to 12 or this or that and I need to time my rests. No guys, he went in and he pushed close to failure, did partials, got a huge pump, got a lot of mind muscle connection. And that's what training's all about. So I'm gonna give him an A grade for intensity in terms of you know going in and trying to give the workout the all. The second thing is they had a fucking blast, right? If you're not training, if you're training and you're so like worried about, like I said, you know, overthinking your workouts, then you're probably not gonna have a good time, you're probably not gonna stick with it. Consistency is the number one thing that's gonna drive results over how much weight you're lifting, over how good your form is. If you are consistent in the gym, Week in, week out, that's going to be better. Somebody that does eight months or 12 months in a row is gonna do so much better than somebody that does a week here or a week there, even if that person's other person's form is way better. So I love the fact that they love to train. They have a good training partner that picks them up. Um, and that's the third thing, that just having a good training partner, I think is a completely overrated thing when it comes to the gym. You have somebody that you can keep yourself accountable to, has a great time with you, you have good rapport with, I think that's an awesome thing to have. So I, I'm happy to see that Shizzy has a good friend that he can go train with, they can push each other, have a great time, and share in an experience. Because the gym's an experience, right? If you're so obsessed with the end result, you cover up all the time, you're hoodie, you train by yourself, you listen to your own music, sure, that's fine. But I'm gonna tell you, the end result is never, ever, ever, ever gonna be as sweet as the process. So enjoy the workouts, enjoy the ride. Things to work on. I think you could really stand from doing some more cable work. That I think cables provide a really great stimuli. You can control that factor of force, low to high, high to low, hit different parts of the chest, pressing, flies, you name it, get crazy range of motion. That's why you see it so often in my videos. But then again, you know, they were at a new gym. I think they were trying to try out a lot of the new equipment. So I would have probably done the same thing because I got cables wherever I go. If I go to a new gym, I want to try out the different plate loaded machines, different maybe pin loaded machines. So not much of an issue there. I think the last thing to kind of, you know, work on would be that range of motion just on some of the exercises, I think. His range of motion on the fly was very good. His range of motion on some of the pressing was very good. But anytime you can maximize that range of motion, you're going to induce more hypertrophy. So yeah, I'm gonna grade this workout actually a B plus. I'm super pleased, actually very surprised. Um, I hope that you guys took a lot of information out of this video. I would train with Shizzy. I could show him a few things, but I would train with him. So if you guys love this video, please subscribe to the channel. Please hit that bell notification. Comment below. We'd love to see more of this type of content from me. Without further ado, I will catch you guys on the next video.